This is a story of wildfire. And I want to warn those of you who have been affected by wildfires that this story will involve fire and loss. It's a bummer. On the hottest day in August 1949, lightning struck a densely wooded area near Helena, Montana. A fire started, 16 men went to fight it, and some survived. It's 1949. You don't know about the natural cycle of wildfires in a forest. Fire suppression is the name of the game. And the ranger just radioed you urgently for help. This fire suppression, this urgency, may be a reaction to the great fires of 1910, the fires that burned an area the size of Connecticut in Montana. Maybe that's why people like you have been commissioned to put out wildfires in remote areas out in the Montana wilderness before they can reach roads, homes, and towns. Your plan is to take 15 of your finest, whoever's available and mostly sober. You're gonna build a fire line. So you're gonna get them to dig a trench with their trusty Pulaski shovel ax thing. You're gonna starve this fire of fuel so that it would peter out just east of the Missouri River. How are you gonna get there? 100 miles out of Missoula. There are no roads out there. There aren't even trails. It's a protected wilderness area. Oh, you? You're gonna jump out of an airplane to a fire! People don't call you a firefighter. You are a smoke jumper. This job has only existed for about nine years and you've been doing it the whole time. It's a relatively new profession, part stuntman, part forestry service. Writers would later describe this as taking on at the same time three of the four elements of the universe, air, earth, and fire. You would never be so fancy as with words. You are a man of constant motion. You take action. You do not stop and consider things like elements of the universe. You are a ripe 33 years old, wearing Levi's jeans, a canvas jacket, and a leather football helmet to jump out of an airplane into a fire! <laughs> You are the foreman of this crew, and at 33, Ov's the oldest. The youngest guy, 17, lied just so he could join this crew, and the rest of these Montana teenagers just looking to make some extra money. Some of these guys are young men who just came out of the war, and they used to fly in planes just like those. And others, some goddamn thrill seekers. Your name is Robert Wagner Dodge. And to my endless amusement, you go by WAG. <laughs> it's 97 degrees in Montana. WAG Dodge and 15 other football helmet wearing giant axe shovel Pulaski carrying whippersnapper smoke jumpers haul themselves in a C-47 World War II plane 100 miles west of their base in Missoula into the mountains. It's bouncing so violently on the way there. The windy conditions throw their equipment hundreds of yards past the drop point. So turbulent that one of the guys on the plane, whose job, by the way, is to jump out of an airplane into a fire, he gets so sick from the flight, he vomits and they send him back home. But everyone else went on to Man Gulch, dropped at their site at 4 p.m. and got to work. And no, it did not escape me that the title of this talk could have been Burning Man. But it's not. <sighs> Enough character building, though. It's time for geography, physics, and math. So first, what is a gulch? <laughs> A gulch is a steep-sided ravine formed by a fast-moving stream, like, like this steep. Pretty steep. And there are dense trees on the south side of Man Gulch, the left in this picture. So it's lots of fuel close together makes the fire burn slow and hot. Fire, unlike people, 
moves downhill slowly, about 20 feet a minute. As it moved, it got hotter and hotter, up to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than lava, with flames about 7 to 11 feet high. Winds, remember that ride here? Are gusting up to 40 miles an hour. Wag Dodge and his crew thought they were going to be able to contain the fire by digging a fire line, but they didn't anticipate what the fire would do next. At 5.40, Wag Dodge met up with his crew after scouting out the area with a local ranger. They continued making their way down, though they'd seen spot fires on the other side of the gulch. They saw the fire start to travel up the ravine towards the crew, threatening to cut off their path, the only viable escape route to the river. At 5.45, he ordered the crew to turn around. Remember when I said that that gulch was steep? This part of the gulch, they're walking on a 76% slope. So for every four steps they take, it's like taking three steps up. We still don't know exactly how the spot fires got started and got to the other side. Could have been winds from the thunder cell, that thunderstorm that started the lightning. Or maybe the fire itself created winds from the convection column and launched pieces of burning trees across. We know that the fire was on one side of the gulch burning slowly downhill in the thick Douglas firs. Then those spot fires jumped the gulch and quickly merged with the main fire. What happened next had never before been witnessed by anyone who survived to describe it. The air between the two fires became superheated and the main fire exploded. This is called a blow up. Fire is not like people. It moves downhill slowly, but uphill in the tall, dry grass. Fire moves fast. In August of 1949, lightning struck and started a fire in Man Gulch. Fifteen young smoke jumpers led by Wag Dodge approached the fire around four and saw it jump across the steep ravine from the dense forest at 540. As they scrambled up that loose rock and tall grass, they realized their path to the Missouri River had been cut off by the fire, and they were ordered to turn around at 545 and started to run. At 5.50, Wag ordered them to drop their tools, because some of them were still carrying those heavy-ass Pulaski's and two-handed saws. At 5.52, the ravine got steeper, and the fire got faster. The flames were 10 feet tall, 20 feet tall. It was racing now, not 20 feet a minute, 600 feet a minute, 700 feet a minute. In the desperate run up the steep ravine, Wag yelled. He stopped and he yelled to his team, and then he did something no other smoke jumper had ever done, seen, or heard of. This fire is 300 feet deep. That's a football field of fire with flames 20 feet tall. That's up to this balcony. And the sound, the sound of a fire of this magnitude, it's like a freight train coming to you. You are Wag Dodge. You see your crew trying to outrun this fire. You can't hear each other. You can hardly see each other through the smoke. What do you do? The gulch is so steep. The fire is so fast. You light a fire. At 5.53, Wag Dodge stopped, lit a match, and burned the grass in front of him. He yelled to his team to join him. He wet his bandana with water from his canteen and laid down in the ashes. At 5.55, the fire overtook Dodge, finding that all the fuel in the area had been consumed. The fire parted around him and continued up the gulch. At 6.10, at 6.10, Dodge stood up unharmed and walked out of the ashes of his fire. Wag Dodge survived the Man Gulch fire by setting what's now called an escape fire, something he'd never been trained on, never heard of, never thought of before. He wasn't thinking, he just knew he couldn't outrun that fire. The two other survivors testified that they saw him. They saw him try to wave them down, they saw him try to explain, 
But in the deafening noise, the blinding smoke, the confusion, desperation, and fear, they didn't understand and surely had never heard of that technique. They managed to survive by crawling into a crack in the rocks through a ridge into the ravine and survive on the other side. But 13 smoke jumpers did not. There was then, and continues to be, speculation that Wag Dodge's escape fire is what caught up with some of the members of his crew. We don't know what would have happened if he hadn't lit that fire. What we do know is that the escape fire worked, and as a direct result of this man gulch fire, we've studied it and developed fire shelters, and escape fires are still taught as an emergency technique in the field. There are no more leather football helmets and Levi's. We know a lot more about fire now and have exchanged our advocacy of fire suppression with a policy of controlled burns and a more nuanced understanding of wildland fires. The tragedy of the Man Gulch fire was devastating to the Forestry Service. It was the first fatality since they'd started the smoke jumping program and the national discussion developed into a more formal study of extreme fire behavior, which led directly to the funding and creation of the Missoula, Montana Fire Sciences Laboratory. As a result of research at labs like theirs, firefighters have survived fires much more intense than the Man Gulch fire using these techniques. So much of our knowledge of fire can trace its origins directly to Man Gulch. <sighs> On August 5th, 1949, lightning struck Man Gulch in the wilderness of Montana. A fire started and grew more powerful than anyone, especially those 16 smoke jumpers anticipated. In the desperate scramble up the steep ravine, one man, Wag Dodge, had an idea. He started his own fire and survived. <laughs> 